Hallelujah. Makohura You are high and you are lifted up. There is no one like you. Papa, we come, our hearts are gladdened. And our hearts are enlarged towards you, O God. You that answered prayers. Hallelujah. To you, the praise belong. Father, we praise you. Father, we adore you. We humble ourselves, O oh God, and we just enter your presence. We reverence you, and we come in the name of Jesus Christ, our high priest, our redeemer, our king. Oh, he's our soon coming king. Hey, the high priest, the bishop of our souls, our own advocate, who is appearing before the Father every minute on our behalf. Lord, we rejoice because heaven is rejoicing over your goodness, and we on earth are rejoicing because what you do for us, nobody can do it, Lord. You bring miracles that blow our minds. Yes, Lord. Nothing compares to you, Daddy. We worship and say you are king forever and ever in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Please come with me to First Samuel. First Samuel chapter 2. Glory. We're going to just do a few minutes and you know, do our prayer session and then we'll go right into the Bible study session. So, this is her, our first Samuel chapter 2 from verse 1. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord, my horn is exalted over my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy as the Lord, for there is none beside thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. Glory. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. And by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty men are broken. And they that stumbled are guarded with strength. They that were full have hired out themselves for bread. And they that were hungry ceased, so that the barren had born seven. And she that had many children is was feeble. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to, I, I got excited, you know, this scripture the Lord put it in my heart a few days ago, and I just get excited, excited about verse 3. It said, talk no more so exceedingly, exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. Hallelujah. Mother of I just want to worship him. I just want to bless him. Anybody that blesses themselves over me, exalts themselves over us, and think that they can exact in wickedness and iniquity upon us, either because of their title, their status, their position, or anything. The Lord said, talk no more so exceeding proudly. Hallelujah. Let not arrogance just enter your mouth. Hmm? Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Let not arrogance come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. Just begin to bless the Lord. Father, we just worship you. I, I just honor you, Father. There is none holy like you. There is none besides you. Neither is there any rock like you, my God. Lord, my heart is rejoicing in you. You are the one that lifts up my heart. You exalt our hand like that of a unicorn. Father, we thank you. You that teach our hands to war and our fingers to fight. We lift you high, Jehovah God. We honor you. Lord, at your gates, we will praise your name. We will sing praises to you at your gate. We will raise worship. We will raise incense. We burn 
incense of praise and incense of prayer. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. You are the God of knowledge. And by you, actions are weighed. And when you weigh the actions of the wicked, it amounts to nothing. But by glory and by your honor, by your grace, you are God that lifts us up. We bless you, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We enter into the presence of God. And you just want to open yourself and say, God, have mercy on me. Forgive me of every sin. Forgive me of anything that the accuser of the brethren uses as a legal ground to accuse me, to hinder me, to interfere with your goodness over my life, whatever. Or even as we come tonight, whatever the accuser of the brethren can take as a legal ground, we just plead the blood of Jesus. For against every accusation, we plead the blood of Jesus. Against every indictment, we plead the blood of Jesus. Whether it's indictment in the spirit realm or in the physical realm, even in legal indictments, Lord, we raise a plea of the blood of Jesus tonight. In the name of Jesus. And thank you because the Bible says you are the God that forgives so that men may fear you. Lord, we thank you that you say that you will not always chide. You said the spirit will fail you. So we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You cannot stay angry forever. Lord, in wrath, you always remember mercy. We thank you for your mercy that is rich towards them that fear you, towards them that love you, Lord. Father, tonight we celebrate you. We celebrate divine forgiveness. We celebrate grace. Hallelujah. We celebrate. We celebrate the blood of Jesus that brought us salvation, that brought us into the place of grace. We celebrate Jesus who did what no one can do. Oh, redeeming us from past sins and present sins. Oh, yes, Lord. And using your blood, Jesus, to, 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 to blot out every handwriting of our ordinance that is against us, that is contrary to us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, we thank you. According to your word, you said our righteousness is of you. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, we humble ourselves tonight. Thanking you that the Bible says you remove our sins from you as far as the east is from the west. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We celebrate your grace. We celebrate your mercy. We celebrate your loving kindness. We celebrate divine forgiveness in Jesus' name. We celebrate you. We celebrate you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Father, we release the blood of Jesus in the air and the land and the sea. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that washes white as snow. We release the blood of Jesus into this environment and the blood of Jesus sanctify this environment in Jesus and that this is an environment of prayer, environment of the anointing of the presence of God, that this is the gate. Yes, Lord, the house of God. Thank you for the angels that are ascending and descending. For we have entered the Bethel of God. Hallelujah. Lord, therefore, the place is sanctified. No contrary spirit, no power of darkness can, can manifest here in Jesus. And they are not welcome in Jesus. May we raise the blood of Jesus on the door. Oh, you spirit of violence, the blood of Jesus is against you. The Bible said that violence will not be heard in our gates. Hallelujah. Both in our gates in this assembly and in our individual dwelling places in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We release the blood into the, the atmosphere, this environment of God. And we declare that the holiness and the goodness of God.
husband must rest upon this neighborhood that men and women will begin to bow down and worship him in spirit and in truth in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the power of the blood of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Ghost that destroys yokes and bondage is so called and delivers those that are held in bondage by the enemy that they are loose and they begin to serve you. Lord, that's our decree over this neighborhood. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, they will flow into the house of God. Hallelujah. We bless you. We honor you. We thank you for planting this house here. Lord, we thank you that you brought us here. And Lord, only when it is time for us to go, will you send us out in Jesus' name. Lord, no man will remove us from where you have brought us in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you that in this house we will prosper. In this neighborhood we will prosper in the name of Jesus. Take your glory, Lord. Take your honor, Lord. May your name always stand up to be alive. May, may we worship you. May everyone that comes in here recognize the God of all the earth. And may everyone that comes here be convicted of the righteousness of God. That they may serve you, that we may serve you in spirit and in truth, O oh God. My God, whom do we have in heaven and who on earth besides you? Lord, you call this place to your house. You called us by your name. And your name will continually be on our lips in Jesus' name. Father, by your power and your glory, will you strengthen us and strengthen everyone that comes to this house, Lord, that they will know you and know you deeper and they begin to experience the miracles. Oh, God, the miracles in your name. Hallelujah. That they will experience love and fellowship with you, relationship. Lord, that they will always have testimony, so God, that those that come here will hunger for the word of God and will love to eat the word of God and to digest and meditate on your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Father, that you will use us to reach out into this neighborhood and into everywhere we go to declare your word and to declare your name. That we will not be ashamed to talk about Jesus wherever we go. But Father, most importantly, I ask you that our lives will preach Jesus. Our lifestyles will be a gospel. Oh God, our character and attitude that we will carry the essence of the glory of God. And wherever we go, the presence of God will be revealed. Father, use us, O oh God, to bring forth souls into the kingdom of God, to administer the, the mercy of God. Use us, O oh God. Rest men and women that are strong for God in this house. Men and women that you will use to break the camp of the enemy and draw those that are held captive free. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Father, we honor you. Father, we adore you. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, King of glory. I want us to go to Micah. As we read this scripture, we will close this uh, prayer session. We will pray with this and then we close with this prayer session and go on to Bible studies. Thank you, Jesus. Micah chapter 4 from verse 1 to 2. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and the people, people shall flow into it, unto it. And many nations shall come and say, come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths. For the Lord shall go forth out of Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. This is actually a prophecy of the last days for real. When the Jesus would, would have come to reign on earth. But we're going to stand on this scripture and claim and call forth that this house is also a house of God because this is where we meet. Amen? Amen. We're going to pray that this house is, on, is, 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 is a house that is set on a hill. 
Just let the light of God draw men. Let them flow from the east, west, north, and south into this place. Amen. Amen. To come and have an encounter with the Lord. To come and be nurtured. I want you to pray that prayer. Hallelujah. Yes, that God, God Jehovah, will leave this house, oh God, that this house is planted, it's a light, it's, a, it's, it's like a, a lamp on a hill. After all, we are on a hill. So Lord, in Jesus' name, we ask that you will cause men and women to flow from the east, west, north, and south. Into this place in Jesus' name. Amen. That they will come and be taught. That the word of God that you give us, the rich word, the rich food, that they will partake of it. That they will desire of it. We ask that the angels of the Lord will go in the highways and byways. Carry these words that God is giving us. These revelations, hallelujah. The things that God is doing that we will be advertised divine. Let the angels of God advertise us on the highways and byways and draw souls into this place. Now they will see the glory of God. Let the fire of God burn so much here that people will see and go that the Lord will begin to send us that he's appointed to come to the house, to come in here and to come and eat so that we thought of God. That we taught the truth, that we taught the fear of God, that we taught salvation, that we taught to seek God with all their hearts. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let this house be a mountain of God. Let it be exalted above the hills and let the people flow. Flow, flow. Tell the people flow. Say, flow from the east, flow from the west, flow from the south, flow from the north into the house of God. Turn to this place in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 2 says, And many nations shall come and say, Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, where they find the truth, where they find light. Light attracts. We have said that our light in, 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 in Isaiah 16, the Gentiles will be led by our light. And it said that kings will be drawn. To the light, to the glory of, of our rising, right? I'm paraphrasing it. We will use it to pray on Monday. Therefore, today, in this house, let kings be attracted. Amen? Let the Gentiles, those that are outside, let the poor come and be fed. Let the poor come and be nurtured in the spirit. Hallelujah. Let them come and receive of the Lord so that they can manifest in the goodness of the Lord and the wealth of God shall be released unto them. Thank you, Lord. You guys pray with me. Pray and speak. Speak the word. Hallelujah. Malabashaka. Erabaka Lord, your word, Lord, your wisdom, your counsel, your true word must always go forth from this house, Lord. That the people shall come and hear the unadulterated word of God. The thus saith the Lord, the word that God prepared, oh God, season after season, that this house will teach, that they will come to be taught the law, to be taught the truth, to be taught grace, to be taught the gospel, to know salvation, and to receive salvation, and to prosper in salvation in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Yes, Lord, that the word of the Lord, God of Jacob, God of Isaac, the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that the Father and Lord of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will lift up this house and draw men unto him and take glory that those that God has appointed into this place, whom the enemy are still blocking, must be loosened by the fire of the living God so that they can flow into the house of God in Jesus' name. Father, we praise you. Father, as they come, they will abide. They will abide in Jesus' name. They will love the house and they will abide. They will have, Father, we thank you. That the angels will say to them, come and see. That the people that came to this house and tested the goodness of God must have the anointing, the come and see anointing. Yes, Lord, that they will go and tell other people, come and see. 
And that the people will come, and when they come, they will see. Not only will they see, they will abide. And they will grow, and they will flow, and they will minister to the Lord God of Israel, the God of truth, the God of the whole earth that we serve in Jesus' name. Father, fill the house with your presence. Let your righteousness, O oh God, fill us. Let everyone that is identified with this ministry, O oh God, hunger after the, your righteousness. Let, them, let us thirst after your righteousness. Let your hand be upon us for good in Jesus' name. Father, use us in the house and outside of the house. Put the mark of Jesus upon us. That the enemy cannot exact his wickedness upon us in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for protecting us. For upholding the leadership, O oh God. And Lord, also for building those that are coming. Bringing those that have come to step into their rightful places in ministry in Jesus' name. Lord, you said the little one shall become great shall become a great nation. For our desire, our prayer is not like that. People come and stay the same. We pray that they grow in you. That they will advance, oh God, and they mature, Father, and they will overcome their shortcomings and weaknesses. And they will be used to your glory and to your honor. In the name of Jesus, Father, we give you glory, we give you honor. Thank you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for protecting. Thank you for leading. Thank you for bringing divine healing that it will manifest in the house that those that come and those who have, have faith in the prayers of the saints that come from this altar or from this altar that they will receive manifestation of the divine healing in Jesus. You are the Lord that healed us. You sent your word and you healed our diseases. We thank you that Jesus came for us. And the Bible said that you, you Jesus, came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. We give you glory, Lord. We give you honor. Thank you for the essence of your presence filling the house. The essence of the blood of Jesus. Your mighty power. Your glorious presence. Hallelujah. May the fire never cease to burn on this altar. May your fire never be quenched in, on this altar and in this house in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Just lift up your hand and begin to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. We bless you. We honor your holy name in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We go right now into Bible studies. Father, we thank you. Our teacher, teach us, O Lord. Let wisdom, let counsel from God go from this place, O God, and let our lives continually be transformed by your word in Jesus' name. As the name is, so shall we be. We're people that will be progressively transformed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to bless everybody, those that are in the house. God bless you. We appreciate you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I also want to thank those that are joining us even right now. And even for those that will join later. We want to thank God for you in Jesus' name. You know that the Lord is ministering in the name of Jesus. And we just want to submit to him so that he can minister to us. Every one of us is a student. Hallelujah. Amen. And we are all growing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we started talking about the altar last week. And we, we kind of, you know, had like a, a, a definition. What the Bible, what you mean by an erased place that is used for sacrifices and offerings. Amen. And I know we did touch on a lot of things last week. I hope you took notes and I hope you always go back to listen to this recording since we record them. Thank God. But I know that what really blessed me last week was remembering that God, amen, God can always get the right sacrifice, provide 
the life sacrifice that we will offer on the altar of sacrifice to him. Amen. Amen. Remember when Abraham climbed the mountain and set up the altar of sacrifice and put his son Isaac on the sacrifice and he was about to kill Isaac. God will never, never receive the blood of human beings. But he just did that to test Abraham. So he held his hand and said, stop, don't touch the land. And then when right Abraham looked, he said, look, there's a ram there. Take it and sacrifice to me, amen? amen? I heard a man of God teach, and the man of God said, while Abraham was climbing from one corner of the mountain, the ram was coming closer and closer. So at the time Abraham was there, the ram was waiting for the right time to be used. Hallelujah. So I declare over you tonight that you will find your rams at the right time for the glory of God in Jesus' name. Amen. God will always provide a sacrifice for himself. Amen. That's why he said to the children of Israel, if I were hungry, that's in I asked Psalm 50, or is it Isaiah 50? I think it's Psalm 50. He said, if I were hungry, I would not even tell you. Because the cattle on the, on the thousand hills are mine. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, and when it was the right time, he gave us the perfect sacrifice. And that is the most important gift we will ever receive on this earth. The Son of God. God gave his only begotten Son and he became a sacrifice for our sins. Amen. There is always a need for an altar. Amen. Amen. You cannot put a sacrifice, you cannot sacrifice on any other place but on the altar. That's why the tabernacle was very important as well. There were other things, but that was a place where you come to offer sacrifices and offer incense unto the Lord. The, the, the temple was very important. It's also a place where you meet God. Hallelujah. And in the place where you meet God, there must be an altar to offer sacrifices of praise, sacrifices of worship, incense, and sweet smelling other unto the Lord. We thank God that we don't need to offer burnt sacrifices anymore because Jesus did that for us. Hallelujah. Anytime we approach his presence, all we need to do is call the name, the blood of Jesus. And, 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 and the sacrifice speaks in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. 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 So we just talk about um, <laughs> the offerings and sacrifices of God that were made on altars before the dispensation of the law or the introduction of the law. And I mean before the Old Testament laws or, you know, that's the, before the children of Israel went into the, uh, went, be, you know, when they left Egypt and they went to the promised land. Remember, they spent 40 years in that wilderness. And in that place, God gave them a law. God made them his special people. God made a code of ethics which became the law, including the Ten Commandments. Prior to that, they never had the code of ethics. They never had the code of uh, Christian, uh, well, uh, we can say Christian living, but you know, Godly living, amen. amen. It was at that time that they actually became Jews because Jew is a religion, Jewish religion, amen. amen. So Jews are people identified by their religion and they are called Jews because they practice the Jewish religion. And that, that brings me to something that I heard that um, some, a man said that they don't know why Christians see people that marry many wives as people that are wrong, like sinners. That Abraham married many wives. I said, can you tell that person that Abraham was not a Christian? <laughs> Abraham was not even a Jew, if you understand what I mean. Abraham had already come and gone before God even began to give them the code. I call it code. They meant code of ethics, but it's the Ten Commandments. It's the law. 
So Abraham lived by the culture, even though he feared God. He still followed God, amen. amen. But there was no law that he was following. So we cannot always say Abraham did this. And remember that we are moving on in our relationship with the Lord. And now as Christians, we have the commandments to follow. We have the charge of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have the scriptures that have been put down for us to follow, to walk after our, to walk after the will of our Savior. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I said that in the New, in the Old Testament, before even before the law, Cain and Abel made sacrifices. They made offerings unto God. They had to have made those sacrifices on altar. Who taught them? Their father taught them. Amen? Amen. Who taught their father? Who taught Adam? Who told Adam you need an altar to sacrifice? Who? God. God. Thank you. And so you realize that altars are of God and altars are of all. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to come. And then I said, no one made sacrifices to God. No one made sacrifices to God. Hallelujah. We can look at Genesis 8. And, and while we're talking sacrifices, remember that we're saying that there is no sacrifice that you can make to God except on an altar. There has to be a place. That is said, there has to be a rest place. Hallelujah. Where you prepare, where that are prepared for your sacrifices. So when I talk about all these, I'm telling you that they all have to make use of what? Altars. So we go to Genesis 8, 16 to 22. And so just before we go on, if you have read about Cain and Abel, you realize there was two people that made offerings on the altar for God. And there was one person's out, uh, sacrifices was accepted, the other person's sacrifice was not what? Accepted. One person's offering. Why? God does not, God is not looking for you and say, I can't wait for sacrifice. He doesn't just take any sacrifice. And you know the importance of, remember that if you read the book of um, Exodus, you know, Exodus, like, is it from like 20 or 18, 25, when God was giving the, 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 the direction and instruction to Moses, there had to be a way that the altars will be built. There was a way that the altars will be maintained. There are some specific things that had to go on the altars. Everything does not go on the altar. Hallelujah. Amen. So the altar also must be holy. So when you're sacrificed, you're giving a sacrifice, what is the altar? How is the altar? Don't think that God is there and he can't wait for your sacrifice. Your sacrifice can be accepted or denied. And actually at the acceptance of your sacrifice may also depend on how holy or how you were able to make your altar. If the altar is desecrated, then the offering and the sacrifice is a desecrated sacrifice. And God will not take it. God is not hungry. Remember what I said, Psalm 50, God said, if I were hungry, I wouldn't even tell you. He's not looking to wait for you to bring those things, to serve him. God has all that. But think about it like this. Whenever the sacrifices go up, something comes down. What comes down? The blessings. Hallelujah. So when you hear when the praise go up, the blessings, it must be praises that God has said. We always talk about that, especially when we do our winter praise. God is not sitting and waiting once you say hallelujah. If the hallelujah is not coming from an altar that is holy, it goes nowhere. So we're looking at, uh, thank you, Jesus. 
We're looking at Genesis chapter 8, from verse 18, because of time. And Noah went forth, and his sons and his wife, and his sons' wives with him, every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth, after their kinds went forth out of the ark. Verse 20. And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord. Lord. What did he do? What was the first thing he did when he came out? Build an altar. He built an altar. And after he built an altar, what did he do? He, that's where to sacrifice. He didn't just go and took the animals and started killing them anyhow and handling them. No, he made prepared a place where his sacrifices will be accepted. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> First God. I don't know if you're really getting this. Because in this New Testament time, who is that altar? Where is the altar of God? Altar is always in the temple. Amen. Amen. Where is the temple of God? We are the temple. We are the temple. So his altar is in us. We will get there. But I want to just build that foundation. I don't want you to get carried away with these stories. I do want you to continue to connect it to you. Amen. Because that's why we're studying it. We're not just here for history lessons. Glory. So I'll read verse 28. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savour, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not, not again cast the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. Verse 2. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. You have to be careful on how you make your sacrifices. What did the Bible say? Noah built an altar. You must make sure that you have a holy altar. Remember that God does not always accept every sacrifice. He did not accept the sacrifice of Cain. Because there was a reason why when we were in Sunday school, we thought it was because he took yam and sacrificed. That's what we were meant to do. Uh, and that uh, his brother sacrificed animal and he sacrificed yam. But as I grow up in the Lord, I begin to understand that's not why. He sacrificed, yes, God honors the, the, the blood, right? But what kind of heart did he have? Amen? Amen? What kind of altar did he build? He took to give God from what he had. And I don't think God would just reject him anyhow. I'm thinking that it depended on the altar. Hallelujah. Depended on who is giving. How are you giving? What is your heart? What kind of lifestyle? What intention? Are you grudging? Are you giving sparingly? Are you giving with all your heart? Are you giving with celebration? And how is your lifestyle? It's not always about what you give. It's how. It's not always about just giving him a, a sacrificing. God is not hungry for sacrifices. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So you see that when Noah built an altar unto the Lord and he offered a sacrifice, he built an altar that God honor that God accepted and so his sacrifices was also accepted his sacrifices went up and when his sacrifices went up blessings came down look he knew already that our imagination was evil but he put himself because of one man's sacrifice God put himself in a place of restraint 
where he will not be tempted again to do what he did. He took an oath and made a promise. He made a promise even concerning seasons. While the earth remained, seed time and harvest. Summer and winter, I'm adding that, I think. You know, seasons. Glory to Jesus. Amen. And it was because somebody took time to prepare a good altar, whereupon he put good sacrifice that was acceptable unto the Lord. The Lord entered into covenant with mankind because of one man's sacrifice. Our sacrifices, God does not take the altar for granted. How is your altar? Amen? Amen. How is the altar of God within you? And, and how, what kind of sacrifice are you sacrificing on that altar? For the altar to be holy, to, to, for the gift to be holy, for the offering to be holy, it must be offered on a holy altar. Praise God. Hallelujah. So when you're bringing your gifts and your offerings unto the Lord, when you're serving God and you're saying, I am sacrificing this time and I'm doing all this for the Lord and all this for the Lord, make sure that the altar from which these sacrifices are coming are, is holy. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. So it really should touch us. That means that when we offer sacrifices on a holy altar to God, we move God to enter into perpetual covenant that cannot be broken. You don't even know how many covenants that, that God has, has, has really caught with you. Some of us don't even take time to know. I boast about it. When the enemy begins to worry me, I say, enemy, there is a lot of covenant promises on this head, though. I said, God does not break covenant to. I go and I take Deuteronomy chapter 7. I said, God said that he will not break his, his mercy or his covenant unto a thousand generations of those that love him and keep his commandments. See, anytime you do something that will move God to cut a covenant with you, man, God bless you. Amen? Amen. Because he does not break covenant. Amen. Amen. He know as they also say he doesn't break mercy. So if you if you allow put yourself in a place where the mercy of God is released unto you, the Bible says his mercy endures unto all generations. Oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Get excited. Hallelujah. Amen. And in fact, when you go home, let me give you an assignment. Read also. Um, Genesis chapter 9. We all see the rainbow. It came, the rainbow is a product or a manifestation, a blessing that came from the uh, uh, sacrifice that Noah offered unto God. So when this sacrifice offered upon this altar rose up to God, he not only blessed man, but he entered a covenant with man. You know what I said? No altar no sacrifice. Amen. No altar, no, no sacrifice. sacrifice. Amen. Amen. And it's not just an ordinary altar. The altar must be clean. holy. Yes, clean, holy. Sanctified altar. Consecrated. Hallelujah. And every time I say this in my spirit, I'm being led to say, remember, you are that altar. Amen. Amen. So we talk about, now we talk about Abraham and his altars of sacrifice. Every time Abraham encountered God, he built an altar where he sacrificed unto God. He sealed the promise of God to him on the altar of sacrifice. If we would develop that style, lifestyle of sacrifice on the altar of God, we will also with people who are working with sealed divine promises upon us. And you have to remember, when God makes a promise to you, it lasts unto your generations until Jesus returns. Amen? Amen? 
that he might enter a covenant on behalf of the whole earth because of your prayer. Amen. 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 Because of your sacrifice. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So did you see, even before uh, the, type, the, the new covenant, men were sacrificing. I told you. I, I like, you know, there's a song that my people used to sing in those days. Um, I don't know if they still sing it now because things have changed. The way marriages are conducted have changed. We have so much uh, um, um, adopted the white man's style of, you know, marriages. I don't, I loved the traditional marriage in my place in those days. It, it wasn't done, it wasn't a fetish thing. It was still the church that takes the woman to her husband's house. And there's a song they used to sing. One of the songs said, it started in the Garden of Eden. Amen? Amen. And you know that's where marriage started. But you need to know that a whole lot of things started in the Garden of Eden. A whole lot. Regarding the blessings of God. Amen? God did uh, offer the first sacrifice for man in the Garden of Eden. When he killed the animal, the blood was the blood substituted at that time for the blood of Adam and Eve, and he used the uh, the skin of that animal to cover their nakedness. You know, right now Jesus offered the sacrifice for us, and He is our covering. Amen. Amen. Spiritual. You know, everything was done. In a symbolic way. Now that Jesus has manifested, the fullness of the things of the Spirit is manifested. And we are now dealing in the spiritual. And that's why every time I talk about altar, I am pointing to you that we are the altars. Amen. Amen. The spiritual altars. We have it. We, 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 we are embodying an altar in our body. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to Jesus. So you see that so many people made sacrifices unto the Lord. I talked about Job and Jacob. All these ones were before the time of the Lord. You heard Jacob, even how he mistakenly landed on the altar of his, an altar that his grandfather made. And, and we will still get there, but I want you to know something. Altars do not die. Amen? Amen? We will get to that. When you build an altar, a holy altar before God, and based on that altar, you make sacrifices to God. Those altars, every word that God speaks on that altar manifests over your life. And so that's why sometimes you will hear people say that altars speak. Also, that's why demonic altars, also, they speak. They speak evil. And how, that's why you need to break down demonic altars. Amen? Amen? Because the only time they start to speak is when they are destroyed. Glory to Jesus. We will get to that then. This is all still introductory. Well, for Moses... You look at Exodus chapter 25, 40. You can also see Hebrews 8, 1 to 2. In the wilderness, God introduced them to the tabernacle, which houses the Ark of the Covenant, the outer court, the holy place, and the holiest. Of course, it wasn't, it's in the holiest that the Ark of the Covenant is. In the tabernacle were two altars, altar of sacrifice and altar of incense. So, and, and so, if we look at that scripture, it just has to tear up your heart to know that the scripture says that we are the temple of God. And so, if you look at that tabernacle, which was a temple, in the wilderness, they could not build a temple because a temple is a permanent uh, structure. God made them do a tabernacle which they carried. If you had what if you had followed Pastor Solomon's teaching on the tabernacle, you see that the tabernacles had provisions for it to be carried. Amen. Amen. When they moved, the tabernacle moved. 
So the tabernacle was a sort of a walking altar. I called it mobile altar. And it was the, 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 an introduction of a more mobile altar, altar that's going to be established much, much later. But at that time, they had a mobile altar. And then when they came to settle in the land of, you know, in, in Israel, years later, they had to build a temple. And in that temple was the same manner that the, 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 the symbol or the plan that was used to build the tabernacle in the wilderness was also in the temple. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So in the temple, of course, they had altars and they used to slaughter animals and the altar of incense was also where they go to burn incense unto the Lord. And that was only done by the priests, if you will remember. Even the sacrifices were the responsibility of the priests. And so I wanted to just to read the one scripture there, Genesis, uh, Exodus 25, verse 40. I think we read that before. It's the last verse of Exodus 25. And look, that thou make them after their pattern, which was should be in the world in the mount. When he went to meet God on the mountain, a pattern was shown to him. And that was the same pattern they built it in the temple. Okay. So we come to the, when they were in the promised land, like I said, Elijah, you know, they were doing, there was a lot of sacrifices, of course. I'm just using two examples. Elijah made a sacrifice. Remember when he had to encounter the, the prophets of Baal, he had to, go and restore and fix back the altar of God. He had to fix an altar. He had to build an altar that he could sacrifice upon. David and others offer sacrifices to God. And for every sacrifice that is made, there is some sort of altar. There must be an altar upon which the sacrifices were made. Some sacrifices were required to happen in the temple or tabernacle. But wherever a sacrifice is to be made, an altar must be set up upon which the sacrifices will be presented to God. So you see, when we connect and say that our praises or our prayers are sacrificed unto God, then you have to understand that if they are coming from you, then it means that it's coming, that they, there must be an altar in you. An altar is a place, a rest place for God. That means you must be a rest place for God where sacrifices that go up to God from you are accepted by him. And so an altar must be holy. It must be consecrated. Hallelujah. It must be sanctified. I don't know if I have that somewhere so you can write it down today. An altar must be holy, consecrated, and sanctified. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So an altar, I said an altar must be set up when there is a sacrifice. An altar upon which the sacrifices are presented unto God. Remember this, every sacrifice was not acceptable to God. We must always remember. And, and I used to get carried away in those days because I felt that I was doing a lot for God. I was making a lot of sacrifice of service. My time and everything. And even sometimes I would, I would just uh, take off from work and I didn't have time. So anytime I took off from work, I didn't get paid. But I did not mind taking off from work to go and, and do the work of God. Amen? Amen? To be there for the work the church is doing, we had programs that were very good and ministered to people and I would not even ask anybody. I would take time as long as it was possible, and I never get paid. So I knew that was sacrifice. There was a time we wanted to go to, 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 our, our, to a program, and we just had to go early because then the, 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 uh, the woman of God needed help. And so we took off, 
And I packed my things. If you know how I pack things, you will have mercy on me. <laughs> Don't even laugh. My packet book had even my passport, my mother's green card, then my my gold, so many gold chains, special gold chains that my husband bought for me, my my wedding bands and all that. It had so many stuff on that trip. I lost that bag. Yes. And everything in that bag was gone. And it wasn't funny. Amen. So you see, when you go through and you say, oh, this, I sacrifice, I can't. There's a lot of time you begin to feel so special. God had to call me to order. Amen. Amen. It's not about the sacrifices. It's uh, the sacrifices I said I will have to the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The important thing that we should worry about is not what we're giving, is that God, as I'm bringing my offering, my tithe, or whatever to the altar, may it be acceptable unto you. Amen. Lord, forgive my sins. Whatever will hinder from me or my sacrifice from being accepted of you, forgive me, wash me in the blood of Jesus, in Jesus' name. And I'm not just talking about your giving. Your things, the things that you feel you forgo to serve God, the efforts you make to serve God, to be in the house of God, after all, it is for our blessings. Amen. Amen. Remember, whatever we're doing, doesn't really, I mean, God is, is honored by our, our sacrifices. Don't get me wrong. But it's not for you to start feeling that God cannot live without you. That's not true. Amen. He always has 7,000 somewhere who has not bowed their knees to, to, to bail. So we must make sure that our sacrifices that are offered on the altar are, sacrifice, are offered in a way that God will accept it. Amen. And so altars are very essential. So if you're making a presentation to a revered person like a governor, by president, it must be presented to him on a platform that is beautiful, right? Presentable, so nice, or even on a on a good or golden platter. You dare not present a gift to a, a president in any way. He may feel insulted, and you will be rejected. Same way God can reject or accept sacrifices subject to the mode of presentation. Amen? Amen. Praise God. You know that it was now when Solomon came, uh, the Lord said it was Solomon that would build him an altar. So in the land, when they got to Israel, uh, I mean a temple, remember what, what I'm actually saying, is the tabernacle that had moved around, the tabernacle they built, uh, housed the altar and the place of the presence of God. Amen. Amen. So the same thing when he built the temple, they had to bring the Ark of the Covenant of God into that temple. They had to make room, they had to build the holiest and they had to build the place of the altar of incense and the place of the congregation. So it was still the same thing. The altars for sacrifice, for incense, were available and everything was built according to the pattern. Amen. Amen. Okay, that's where we end today. God bless you. Amen. Amen. So next week, by the grace of God, we're going to look at sacrifices and altars after Jesus, after the death of Jesus, the New Testament altars. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So what did you receive tonight? Everything talks about us. Let's stand up and pray. Amen. Amen. You already know that, that the altar that we're talking about is our us. That everything that happened in the Old Testament was a physical pattern. It was a pattern. It was for a pattern to hold on to until the real thing comes. And me and you, we are all privileged to have come in this season, the season where the real thing, the real deal, hallelujah. hallelujah. So I want us to please stand up. Anyone just thank God 
We want to bless the Lord. I want you to pray that you will be an altar that is holy unto the Lord. That you, your temple, will be sanctified. Temples carry the altar. Temples house the altar. You are that temple. You are housing the altar. And from you, sacrifices go up to God. You offer sacrifices on the altar that God has put in you. And that altar is not built with hands. The house of God contains where the presence of God is. And where that presence of God is, there is a provision for the altar of incense and sacrifices unto the Lord. And it is to you. So I will, I say, you are the mobile altar now. Amen? God has a mobile altar. So you want to pray for yourself and say, Lord, may I be an altar from which offerings will rise up to heaven. The smoke of the incense of the offering that is coming from me sacrifices that arise out of this altar that go up from this altar will be received will be smelled oh god that you will perceive sweet smelling other that you will be that will move you even as it, as it moved you in the days of noah the sacrifice that jesus made a sacrifice that qualifies the whole earth to be saved through that sacrifice. That my life, that I'll be making sacrifices that will bring me and generations to come into unbroken covenant by you, O oh God. Mark, can you pray? You pray. I want you, I'm telling you what to pray. I'm guiding you because we need to be touched by what God is revealing to us in Jesus' name. The Bible study is for us to receive, pray, and put it and speak it into our lives and begin to manifest our lives and lead our lives in conform, conform to conform with the word of God. Oh, Jesus. Marabashaka, I pray for myself, Lord. Lord, help me, Jehovah, to be a holy altar unto you. Let my altar be, let me, oh God, be able to sacrifice to you that my prayer, my worship will be on a platter, on a higher place, oh God, a level that is raised, oh God, where you receive what praises, worship, incense, sacrifices, service, even my service, Lord, will be an acceptable sacrifice unto you, according to Romans chapter 12, Lord, verse 1 to 2. Papa God, Papa God, help us to remember your word, to remember this teaching. Ask the Holy Spirit to inscribe and, 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 and craft this teaching into the tablet of your heart. That it will influence your life. That it's not just that you're coming to sit here, feel good, feel excited, and after that, bye-bye. No, that these things that God is revealing and teaching us will be, will be lessons, will be treasures that you will store, that you will use to, to, to advance in the kingdom of God and in your life. Because it's your word that knows to give God acceptable altars. Every of acceptable offerings. Every time you're offering your sacrifice, whatever mode, whatever sacrifice you offer is received. You know that blessings come down. You know that God cuts a covenant. You know that God makes a promise that cannot be broken. Therefore, Lord, help us in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. You know that song that said, Lord, prepare me to be a saint to well. Pure and holy. Tried and true. You want to pray that prayer? We're not singing it, but pray it. Remember that the sanctuary is a place where God is. 
And in that place, there's altar. So may God prepare us. Pray that he, Father, will prepare you. That you are an altar. A holy altar unto God. A consecrated altar. A sanctified altar. Pure and holy altar. Ha! Kabashahi rabakata rabashanta. Tried altar. Altar that has been tried and found to stand the test of time. Pray that you will be a living sanctuary, a living holy altar, a mobile holy altar of God. Hallelujah. Understanding that you are an altar. And at any time you pray or praise your offering sacrifices so that you are an altar that does not even sleep. You wake up in prison, altar incense going up. You sit down, you're praying, you're praising, incense going up. You're doing great services unto the Lord. Any time, that means that an incense is rising. You can be an altar 24 7. When I ask God, 24 7 altar, always ready to, 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 so that the sacrifice that is acceptable of God can be laid upon you, or in you, and through you. Ministering unto God. Father, we give you glory. Father, we ask for this grace. Father, that we're not just coming here every every Thursday and just hearing these things and that we're not making use of it. Father, please help us to practice what you're teaching us. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, we bless you that we will be holy, consecrated, sanctified altar unto the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 We give God glory. If you do, we have an offering today. It's our midweek service, you know, Thursday, we meet the prayer and Bible studies. If you have an offering. You're online. You want to bless this ministry. You can give an offering. If you're in house, you want to bless God. You can give an offering in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, Lord, we bless you. Makata Raba Shataka. Niraba Kata Raba Shanta Raba Siki Rebo Shanta. La Brokoto Rubo Shiki Rebo Skaraba Shata Raba Sika Raba Shanta. Niraba Kata Raba Shanta Raba Sika. Lord, prepare us to be a sanctuary. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Try them, oh, pure and holy, pure and holy. Try them, true, oh, with thanksgiving. I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, as we go home, please take us home safely in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, keep that. Help us to, to keep that and 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 share. You know, jealously hide what you will, we have learned, Lord. That will be a treasure unto us in Jesus' name. Amen. That will not cast the pearls to the swine in Jesus' name. Amen. And that we will practice what you have taught us. We will put it in practice. That we will even be blessed and experience the miracles and the blessings of God upon our lives in Jesus' name. Father, Amen. take us safely, cover us in the blood, cover our homes, our loved ones here and abroad. Cover our jobs, our sources of income, cover oh God, our professions, our careers, cover our ministry, our call, our work with you with the blood of Jesus. Anything about us and everything that pertains unto us tonight, we bring under the blood of Jesus and Jesus. And Father, we declare divine healing. 
to those that are not feeling well, here or anywhere, those that are connected to us and those that we don't even know. Father, we thank you for releasing healing to our sisters, to our brothers. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. They share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.